I'm Mary from Rocky Mountain Gardens, and today I'm going to demonstrate for you how I go about rejuvenating my garden ornaments. Now, you know living at high altitude that our sun is so strong, and when we're outdoors we can get a sunburn very quickly because of the thin air. And at the same time, the sun also will fade anything that sits outside all summer. So I have learned um, how just using some simple paint and little techniques to make my garden ornaments and decorations look new again. Um, today, I'm going to use some paint brushes, some inexpensive paper plates, and I like to use acrylic paints. These are inexpensive also, and you can buy you know, just a few to have on hand. <clears throat> and then I have some sample, uh, these are wall hangings and some of my little gnomes and I have quite a few gnomes because once people found out that I like gnomes I started getting them for gifts to put around in my garden and as you can see this little guy is very faded so I'm going to try to bring them back to life. And I will just do a little demonstration for you so you can use this same technique for your garden. So I'm finishing up quickly here with my light pink color. So now I'm going to switch to my darker pink paint and I'm just going to add some little touches with it to add some dimension to the roses so they don't just look like this flat pink color. So I've got a different brush and I'm going to dip it in and it's going to take a little bit of a trial but I'm going to add this darker pink little striations especially in the center of the rose and you can see I'm not being very careful about it I'm just sort of slapping it on to give it some dimension it's not like I said not hard it's just and you can kind of have your brush strokes go out from the inside of each petal so it looks like little uh, striations coming out and blends in. So really simple. Just quick little strokes. Don't be afraid to use plenty of paint on it. It won't hurt anything. And like I said, it just gives some dimension to your rose so it does not look flat. <clears throat> and of course pink is one of my favorite colors so this is a great technique for this and you can just watch me do the rest of it I'll try speeding this up so that you know it doesn't take as long to watch this video So here's my final product and you can notice I actually haven't touched up the green at all because I like the way it looks. It still has color, enough color, and I like the shade of green that it is. But for the rest of it, I have like a brand new looking plaque with uh, more dimension and deeper colors. 
uh, so it looks more like when I first bought it rather than just being uh, all faded away. And I actually like that a lot. That's going to look really pretty hanging from my gate. All right, so there's one project, easy enough. And here's another sample of another plaque that has faded. Now, this one is, um, you know, it has a lot of gray on it, and it, you can see it says, Welcome Spring. But the colors on these flowers, the same things happen. They're faded, and this little dragonfly has faded quite a bit. And so I'm going to touch this one up as well. And um, I'll probably speed up uh the video so you can watch me do it but yet not have to sit through a long <clears throat> video through the whole process but again i'll start with on these flowers i'm going to start with pink they were pink initially and i'm going to just put more pink, pink paint on them and i'm really going to lather it on because i want uh you know, some really pretty color on these. I want them to really stand out, hanging from my fence. And you know, because these are raised um, uh, flowers, you know, they're not flat. Um, they actually have some dimension to them on the plaque. It makes it very easy to color in, just like coloring on a color book, a coloring book. Quite easy. Really, any one of us could do this. So, I'm going to speed up the camera now, and you can watch me finish up doing these flowers. And in this case, I'm going to leave the leaves the same color that they are, but I am going to spruce up the dragonfly and the painting that I did on the edges because it is such a light color and I just want it to stand out more. So I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this dragonfly uh, spruced up a bit. <clears throat> in this case, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and clean off my one of my brushes, and I just have a little container of water here that I'm going to use. And I have a rag to clean it on a bit too. And then I am going to choose a new color. I'm going to go with, um, let's see here, let's get this paintbrush here. And a new, paper plate, and I am going to take, I think, this darker uh, turquoise right here, and I'm going to use that on the dragonfly and on the edges of this. So we'll shake up the acrylic paint a bit and then get some out here. And then I'll start applying it to the dragonfly, and you can watch.
So I wanted to show you my finished plaque. I'm gonna move this little guy out of the way. And you can see I have um, the edges painted with this darker turquoise color and the dragonfly. And so it's much more colorful and fits in better with my garden decorating style, which I guess I would consider it to be a cottage garden look that I go for in my backyard. And I also try to add a lot of whimsical elements to it uh, that are fun for my visitors, my friends, um, and my grandchildren. So this will be appearing in my garden this summer and it looks much better now. So my next uh, project is to work on some of my gnomes that are quite faded. And this little guy, you can see his little hat is very faded and so on. So I'm going to spruce him up quite a bit today. And I've already started working on this gnome here who uh, was, well, you can see he still looks very bad here, his little hat. The paint has chipped off and it's it's looking bad and I've already painted the base and the flowers and added green grass and I painted the shovel and as you can see like I said earlier with uh, painting the plaques it's almost like doing a coloring book you just uh, try to do the colors as close as you can to what's uh, chipped faded or missing on your objects, whether it's a gnome or, you know, some plastic flowers in your garden. It could be almost anything. So this little guy, I'm going to start uh, working on his hat first, and I have some sort of terracotta colored paint that I'm going to be using on his hat, and it actually matches fairly well. And I'm going to go ahead and work on these, uh, the, these two gnomes. And then I will show you the finished products, uh, uh, projects when they're done. So you can see the difference between the way it looks now and the way it will look when I have repainted everything. Oopsie. So look at the difference between the unpainted portion and the part that I just did. It's quite significant and really makes a difference in your garden ornaments. projects for today and you can see how much better each of them look. It was so improved and I have one last step that I'm going to add to this video uh, to show you how to best preserve your garden ornaments. But for that one last look, here is my um, first plaque that I did with these roses, pink roses. And then my second project.
project was this sort of square plaque with the pink flowers and I added some uh, darker turquoise colors to this plaque to just make it more colorful. And then you saw me start working on this little gnome and he is already almost dry and just looks so much nicer, so much cuter and more colorful. And I do like color in my garden. And my last gnome is this little guy with the shovel and he's still a little wet, so I'm not going to touch him too much. But I've spruced him up quite a bit. He has a nice green jacket on now, a bluish colored hat, and he's just going to stand out in my garden this summer quite a bit and look so cute. Um, so that's all, and I will continue this video with one last step shortly. Okay. Here you can see my setup for uh, spray painting, and I make use of my trusty old shower curtain and blocks of wood again. And you can see I have some of the items I've painted in the last few days sitting there waiting to be spray painted. And spray painting, you know, is not rocket science. It uh, is pretty simple. You want to spray light coats. Um, you want to be careful that you're not over spraying so that you have big drips which will dry and will show on your uh, the item that you're spraying. So you just take your time and spray and I'm going to do a little spraying and you can watch and then we will move on to the next uh, piece of information. Uh, you may have noticed when I was showing some of the spraying sequences that I used two different cans of spray paint and both of them are clear um, polyurethanes but one is a matte version so I get no shine and the other was a, actually a UV resistant clear uh, spray but it is a little bit on the shiny side. I used that on my gnomes because they're a little bit kitschy looking anyway and I want them to look cute. So I'm okay with the shininess, but I get that UV protection that hopefully uh, they won't fade so quickly in the sun. And then the matte finish I used on my whitewashed pot that's down here because I want it to remain, uh, you know, um, just very aged looking so the shininess really wouldn't work with whitewashing and so that's all there is to it it's really quick and easy you just set up your little uh, spray paint area and you're ready to go and there you have a finished product thanks